Liftoff will start in T minus 10 seconds. We have ignition. <coughs> Hello, everyone. I am broadcasting to you directly from our new lunar base. Today's topic is actually quite large. In order to do this lesson, we're going to need to talk about the difference between active voice and passive voice. Active voice is any time the subject of a sentence is also the thing, the person who is doing or who is, you know, in Korean, you might have an action verb or a descriptive verb. Whoever is that descriptive verb or whoever is doing is the subject. The majority of sentences with a subject will just be an active voice because you have a subject, the subject does something or the subject is something. So we can say like, I ate kimchi. I is a subject and the subject does a verb or is a verb if it's a descriptive verb. So here the verb is ate. So we have a subject doing a verb. It's an active voice sentence. So 저는 김치를 먹었어요. So you have a subject. 저는, and you have a verb, 먹었어요. And who or what does that verb or is that verb? Well, a subject. But there are sentences where that doesn't happen. Passive voice, however, is when the subject of a sentence is not the one doing the action, but the subject is the object of a verb. Instead of saying something like, I ate kimchi, what if we were to make the subject of the sentence the thing that a verb is doing something to? We simply would say, kimchi was eaten. Now you have a subject. Well, what's the subject? Well, it's not I, the subject is kimchi. But what is the kimchi doing? The kimchi is not doing anything except the kimchi is the object of a verb in the sentence. So that's an action verb. The kimchi, the subject is being affected by that verb. It's the object of that verb. You wouldn't really say, well, the kimchi was eaten by me, but you could, you could. And that's what passive voice is. There will be times when you really, really want to use that passive. And in fact, there's also times where you need to use passive voice, but the majority of your sentence sentences, you don't need to just change it into passive voice. Changing your sentence into a passive sentence will not make your Korean sound more natural. It won't make you sound smarter. It will make your Korean sound kind of awkward. The verb for to be eaten is 먹히다. You might think and say, oh, so I just add he before the ta and now I have a passive version. No, no, no. Unfortunately, it's not that easy either. Sometimes the word completely changes to become passive. So you have to learn it on a word by word basis. So if you were to say the kimchi was eaten, you'd say kimchi ga mokyosoyo. If you were to say by, so to specify who does something, you use ege. Literally, you say to. And you could say charsu ege mokyosoyo. The kimchi was eaten. You would say by charsu. Before I go further, I want to teach you one more way that you can say by. E, ui, he, so optional. This one's more formal sounding. You cannot use passive verbs with an object. You are not to be eaten something. Something is eaten. So you would mark whatever is eaten by, you know, the subject marker or even the topic marker. Or if you want to say do also or man only. You cannot say kimchi ru mokyosoyo. That makes no sense. Kimchi ga. Kimchi nun. Kimchi do. Kimchi man. You cannot use any passive verb with an object because there is no object. The object is the subject. One quick pro tip is if you see an object marker used with the verb, it is not a passive verb. You can know 100% that that is an active verb and not a passive verb. The nice thing about passive in Korean is that the order of the sentence is the same. So with our example, I ate the kimchi or the kimchi was eaten. We have kimchi, then we have some sort of marker, whether it's the object marker or subject marker, and then we have the verb. When we had, I ate the kimchi was 먹었어요, right? When we had, was eaten, it was 먹혔어요. The only thing that changed here, besides the marker, which has to change, is the verb. You don't have to reorganize the sentence. So let's talk about first, how can you change a sentence to passive? That depends completely on the verb. For verbs that are something hada, for example, 공부하다, to study, 요리하다, to cook. You can change it easily to a passive voice by changing 하다 to 되다. This has to be an action verb where you normally could separate this from 하다. What you cannot do is something like 좋아하다 because 좋아하다 is not a separatable verb. But if you know that the verb can already be split, then you can do that. 준비하다, normally 준비를 하다 means to prepare. Well, what would the passive form of to prepare be? Well, to be prepared. So you could say like, I prepared the documents or the documents will be prepared. Then you can do that. You can say, 준비. So, 하다 goes away, it changes to 되다. 
to become. And then here, not the object marker, because remember, this is passive. Teda itself is being used as a passive verb. So instead, it would use ka or e, you know, e or ka, the subject marker. So that's one point I should make clear that anytime you change hada to a teda verb to make it passive, this part also changes. So this part is optional. You can just say chunbi teda. I started the meeting. But what if you want to say the meeting was started? So the meeting was started. So this first one is active voice and the second one is passive voice. So can you see the difference between these two sentences? The next type of verb is actually quite simple. Can you think of any verbs that end with nada or any verbs that end with neda? Gunnada and gunneda. Gunnada is passive voice, something finishes. Gunneda is active voice. I or somebody finishes, completes something. If you're a student going to class, you can only say one of these. What do you think, A or B? So this is a case where you have to use passive voice because it would be wrong to use active voice in this context. B is the only correct one. But now here's the follow-up question. What would it mean if I said Because this is grammatically perfectly fine. When could I say A? Only a teacher could say A. A teacher could also say B. Today's class is finished. Or I finished class early today. I ended the class. I actually finished it. Not that it finished. So if you were to say suaber, soil, I am the teacher and I decided to end the class early. Another common one, pakuda. Pakuda is to change. And pakida is to be changed. So pakida is the passive form of pakuda. Shinodeng. This is a traffic light. How would you say the traffic light changed? Would you say pakosoyo with A? Or would you say pakiosoyo with B? The traffic light changed. Both of them are grammatically correct. One of them sounds completely wrong. You might think it's pakuda, right? Change. But remember, pakuda is active. Even if you were to say shinodeng e pakosoyo, it would mean somebody changed the light. Is somebody controlling the switch on the light and making it green or red? And if you were to say shinodeng e pakosoyo, that means the light bulb, the light itself, light bulb changed something. And the object that it's changing is unknown because there's no object marker. We don't know what the light is changing. You need to use pakida. You have to say the light changed. In English, we say change for both of these. So learn these verbs in Korean that pakuda means it's an active voice. So it has to change something. So it'll take an object. Whether you say the object in the sentence or not, it is changing something else. Pakida was changed, so there is no object here. Instead, the light is what's changing. To write something with suda. Suida, to be written. Let's say a book written in Korean. Hangumalo sun check. A book that someone, someone did it, someone did it because it's an active verb. Someone wrote this book in Korean. So if I say it means this is a book that someone wrote in Korean. But what if you don't want to say who wrote it? You want to say this is a book that is written in Korean. So you just use suida as an adjective. But now you don't have to say who wrote it. You can just say this is a book that was written in Korean. Some verbs transform into passive by using patta. Not by changing with to, into teda, but by changing into patta. One example of that is... 사랑하다. So if you want to say, I love uh, BTS. <laughs> 저는 BTS를 사랑해요. I love BTS. What if you want to say BTS is loved? You would say 사랑을 받다. These ones you just have to memorize as separately because what they change into is literally to receive that Noun, 사랑을 받다 means to receive love, literally, but it's used as a passive verb to mean to be loved. 존경을 하다, that's the way that people say in Korean to look up to someone. Literally, they might translate it in English as respect. To be respected is actually to get respect. 버리다 means to throw away, but it becomes passive by using this 받다. 버림을 받다, literally to get throwing away or to be thrown away. 찍다 is to take a photo. So you would say 사진을 찍다. But if you want to say a photo was taken, and now hold on, you might think that sounds really awkward. Why would I ever say a photo was taken? But in Korean, this is okay. So if you're with your friends and you're you're taking photo, like, okay, hey, I'm going to take a selfie. And your friend's like, hey, did you take the photo? Well, in Korean, you can ask 찍었어요? Did you take it? Or 찍혔어요? Was it taken? And that's okay too. But people use these slightly different. If you were to say 
사진을 찍었어요. Just means yeah, somebody, you know, I, you, whatever, someone took the photo. When in English might you normally say my photo was taken? When would you say that? Well, yeah, at a traffic camera, you're speeding and you're like, ah, 사진이 찍혔어요. You're talking about, ah, my photo, my photo got taken. These are some of the most common passive verbs that you'll see. 보다, to see. 보이다, to be seen. 듣다, to hear. 들리다, to be heard. You might not think you would use these very often. It does mean literally just to be seen. Think of it this way. It's used to mean to be visible or to be audible. You can think of it like that. I can't see it because it's not visible. Or I can see it because it's visible. As well with tulida, I can or can't hear it because it's audible or not. These verbs are used to mean can or can't see. And this one, can or can't hear. These are the ways that you say you can or can't see something or hear something in Korean. 잘 보여요? Literally, is it seen well? What you're really saying is, is it well visible? Is it visible well? Can you see it? Can you see it well? Like, do you have any difficulties to see it right now? 잘 here just means without difficulty. So if you see 잘 used often, it can be used to mean without difficulty. So can you see it? Can you easily see it right now? An example of how you might use this is, what if you're at a concert and you're really far away and there's a bunch of people standing up in front of you. If your friend asks, hey, 잘 보여요? Are you able to see it? Is it seen? Literally. If you're talking with someone on the phone and it's like, ah, ooh, ah, ee, ee, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. 잘 들려요? Can you hear me now? So this is a common way to ask someone if you can see. Can you see? Can you hear? Like that. So some people might say, wait, wait Billy, I can say 볼수 있다 or 볼수 없다. Literally, I can see and I can't see. Or I can also do it with to listen. I can or can't hear. I can or can't see. So they might say, Billy, what's the difference between just saying 볼수 있다, 볼수 없다, like I can see, I can't see, or I can hear, I can't hear. What's the difference? Because they both mean cannot see. Because these literally mean that you have the ability. This su here has a meaning by itself, though you don't really need to know this. The su for the su ita form for can or can't actually means an ability. So if you're saying por su ita means you're literally saying I have the ability or I don't have the ability to see or listen. So if you are saying por su isoyo, por su opsoyo, you are just saying that whether that's visible or not doesn't matter. It's all on you whether you are able to see it or not. If you said an boyo, you step on top of the chair, your friend gives you a chair, you look over at the concert, your friend asks you, boyo, can you see it? If you were to say an boyo, that means it's still not visible. We're too far, maybe. Maybe it's because you're too far. There's smoke. Maybe there's still lots of people. Just it's not visible. It's not my fault. This is passive. We're not saying who can or who can't see. We're not talking about me. I'm just saying no matter what, that's not visible. It's invisible to me. Por su opsoyo means I do not have the ability to see. I mean, grammatically, it's fine. It's not like awkward. But what you're saying is, oh, I need my glasses. Or, oh, I have something in my eye. Or, oh, uh, there's something blocking my face. I can't see. Like, you're literally saying you are the reason why that thing is not appearing to you. You're not saying that simply is not visible for whatever reason. You're saying active voice. You could say either one. Like, oh, Oh, I can't see. I'm not able to see. But what you really just want to say is, no, 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 like I'm seeing fine. Don't worry about that. We're just talking about the concert. We're just talking about that stage right now or the mountain. Same with tita for listening. So it sounds much better to say poida and tulida when you want to say you can or can't see something or hear something. You just haven't, so you have an active verb. Let's say mandirda to make something. And what if someone asks you, ige boyo? What is this? And you want to say, oh, this is a board made of wood. But what if you want to say it's made of wood? Well, you're going to need a passive tense. There's a ending you can stick on to some verbs to make them passive. And what that is is, so you just do regular conjugation and then you attach chida, and then you can conjugate that. So mandirda would normally in the yu form or no, when you're just conjugating it regular is mandiro, right? And then you would add chida. Now you have the verb, the passive form of to make, which is to be made. This does not apply to every verb, but it does apply to a lot of verbs that don't already have other ways to make them passive. So namuro, made of or with, you'll use the uro, this particle for saying what it is made of. 만들어 졌어요. 나무로 만들어졌어요. It is made of wood, but it's made of 나무로 made of wood. 만들어졌어요. Let's give another example of that. You can do 주다. 주다 is to give. 주어지다. 
is to be given. One more example of this form would be tangida. So tangida means to pull something. So if you're pulling, if you want to make this into a passive, it actually becomes tang kyo jida, tang kyo jida, to be pulled. However, the verb for to push, mirda, does not become passive by becoming mirojida. It becomes passive by becoming milida. So you can't just attach jida and assume that it's going to work. Verbs might have already their own passive form. And if I don't get back, if I don't get back in time, yeah, it's going to be a problem. See you guys next time. 그럼 다음에 또 봐.